Um, I'm nervous. A lot of people saying that you can't ever regatta here because there's not enough wind. Where are we, Taylor? I hope to come back next year for the next Bacchus annual regatta. Thank you very much. Yay! Yeah! with Hurricane Irma. Boats toss. Here we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bocas del Toro region is a beautiful group of islands in Panama on the Caribbean border with Costa Rica. We had been lured there by stories of world class surf and we were not disappointed hence why we stayed almost six months. It is home to a large community of retired sailors whose boats have become more of a home in a marina than active sailboats. So when I decided to organize Panama's first ever sailing regatta I was faced with the huge task of getting this community sailing again. But luckily we had made some great friends in the area and slowly but surely the registration started rolling in. So we're in Bocas del Toro. And I've been here for a few months. And it gave me an idea that we should do a regatta here. So since then I've been working pretty hard trying to make this happen. I've, um, I'm working with Bocas Marina. There's a foundation here called Give and Surf, which is the non-profit organization um, developed to help the underprivileged kids and education in Bocas del Toro and the wider, wider area as well. So I met with the director of that program, Emily, and she's just been amazing and she's super excited. All of our entry fees are gonna go straight to her. We've got 19 votes registered after a week, so. We've got another two two weeks to recruit some more so every morning i do an announcement on the radio because there's a radio net here and it's all for a good cause so it's been super exciting and it's been fun putting all my energy into it and i've been driving around in the dinghy trying to recruit boat yeah i better do my announcement good morning dolphin bay all right john Kenna, Layla. hey gordon Parlay. Hey, good morning, Colin. Great seeing you and your group there last night. Who else? We've had to do a lot of research on how to rate the boats. Um, so some of you sailors out there might find this interesting. There's things called, there's a whole bunch of different um, sort of protocols out there, but the main one would be the, the PHRF system. And there's a few different website websites here and it's got a whole bunch of uh, common, fairly common cruising sailboats and their uh, PHRF rating. So these are all the boats here that have registered. We've got 27 boats. Um, so I've got the, the boat name, the owner, the type of boat, and then we've worked out their ratings. Once we have their ratings, we can give them a start time because it's a pursuit start. So everyone gets a different start so that it's a photo finish at the end. So first one over the line is basically the winner. We've got the mono hulls here, and we've got the multi hulls here. So you can go to multi hulls, and what it will give you is um, something called the Texel rating. And the Texel rating here, for example, this boat right here has got a Texel rating of 98. Um, that is determined by their gross tonnage, the hull speed, the sail area, um, a whole bunch of things are factored in and they give you what's called a Texel rating. And with that Texel rating you can kind of cross it over into a PHRF rating using this calculation that we put into the, the spreadsheet. We've got some awesome prizes. Um, the Bacchus, Bacchus Marina has um, donated two, two free week dockage um, at the marina, so there's two prizes there. Reach out to the manager of Shelter Bay Marina. He's giving one month free dockage for a mono hull and one month free dockage for a multi hull, which is amazing because a lot of these boats are going through the canal next. We've got an open water dive course. We've got meal vouchers. We've got bar tabs. Um, 
whole bunch of prizes. We only really needed six. First, second, and third for mono hulls. First, second, and third for multi hulls. But we've ended up, there's 10 in front of me and there's more coming in. So the support from the community here has been just incredible. We've got a lot of friends now that are helping us make this possible. Um, everyone kind of is super excited about it because we're making history here. And here's our friend Mike, actually, who I have to speak to about the, uh, he's, he's put in one of the markers in, so I'll check back with you in a second. Later that afternoon, we had an appointment with the mayor of Bocas del Toro, who gave us his blessings and offered to support us in any way he could. The next day, we were interviewed by the local newspaper, who did a full article on the race and how the community was coming together for this exciting event. So it was full steam ahead for the regatta. The regatta is on Tuesday, it's Saturday today. And we've just, we think we finalised the course yesterday, so we're going to go just sail the course, make sure it's all legit, check the depths and stuff like that. Yeah, and, uh, our video, friends video Mardi Gras on Mardi Gras are coming, they got a Lagoon 39. And uh, yeah, just have a sail for a couple of hours. One of the key people who helped me out from the start was Guillaume from Baltic Lady, who had been in Bocas for years and had a wealth of knowledge in the wind patterns in the area. So we set out in the afternoon to map the course one last time. Unfortunately, to our dismay, we had less than five knots that afternoon, which was extremely disheartening for our upcoming race. If conditions were like this on the day, it would be a total flop. But we chose to keep our spirits high by having a bit of fun with a good old fashioned raft up. So it's the night before the regatta and we've called for a captain's meeting. I can see all the skippers are starting to turn up with a couple of their crew as well. So there's getting to be a bit of a crowd turning up to the marina here at the cantina. So there's a lot of excitement in the air, I think. And uh, it's all for a great cause going towards Give and Surf Foundation. So um, tonight's the uh, captain's meet. So I've got to run the meeting. I've got to try to convince these people that I know what I'm talking about. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bocas del Toro's first annual sailing regatta. I set a goal a month ago to try to get 30 boats, and uh, as of this morning, we've got 31 boats registered. So, thank you very much, everyone, for registering. It's going to be a great day. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the course laid out for us here. Uh, this is the marker you can see straight out there. Paul's here. He's the official marshal for the uh, regatta. So he's going to be making sure that one's... You're going to come around and you're going to keep this marker on your starboard side. And then you're going to come towards the finish line and you're going to keep this marker on your starboard side. Do not go around Bella Luna. He's got a dog on that boat that'll eat you anyway. So you've got to come around, keep that on your starboard side. And that's a five mile lap. Good morning everyone. After weeks and weeks of preparation, the day is finally here. It is regatta day. Um, we have an incredible 32 boats entered. So we're going to see 32 sails out in the bay today, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm nervous. We've uh, been preparing this for a few weeks. Just over a month actually. And a lot of people saying that you can't have a regatta here because there's not enough wind. I don't want there to be no wind for the pure fact that if there is no wind and the regatta is a bit of a flop, they won't ever attempt it again. And I know a lot of people want it to become an annual event. Um, so all we need is about eight knots of wind and the, the day will be a huge success, I know it. So that's my only concern at the moment is, is the wind. Everything else has fallen into place perfectly. The 
We've had so much support. We've got 22 prizes donated to us. And this has been a long time coming for Panama and um, they're just stoked to see see this actually coming to fruition. I think it's spectacular. We're all excited about it and hopefully it's the first of a hundred. Particularly since in a hundred years I will be hitting my sexual prime. <laughs> <laughs> this is Marilyn and that's her husband Roger. And they've kindly volunteered hey to be the uh, marshals at the second marker. Yay. We'll sail past them twice, hopefully in All the right. lead. Thank you for sale. your help. I'll take you out there. I'll be there you goes Bolivar taking absolutely everything off his racing trimaran there. There's Sugar. And there's Spinnaker. <laughs> so we picked up the last of our crew, which were kids from the Give and Surf Foundation, none of whom had ever been on a sailboat before. So it was time for a last minute briefing before throwing the lines and heading out into the bay. As mentioned before, the regatta was a pursuit style race, where the slowest monohull starts at 12.30, with all the boats staggered after them, dependent on their handicaps. So as the start times approached, people started jockeying for position to await their turn. All engines obviously had to be off, so it was time to hoist the sails. Once everyone's clocks had been synchronized, it was time for the first monohulls to make a dash for the start line. Parley's start time was 12.51, so we kept a close eye on the time and got off to a great start headed for the first marker. The big cats were neck and neck on the first leg, none of us really knowing what to expect once we rounded the first marker. Am I going to hurt me, my eyes? You got it? No, you're good. This car is just flying. And then in the blink of an eye, Bolivar on his trimaran flew past us as though we were not even moving. That meant that only second place was up for grabs in the multi-hull class, so people started to get serious. Although many of us had raced before, pretty much none of us had raced our own cruising sailboats, so the adrenaline was running very high as the boats almost collided with each other round the markers. Things started to get really interesting when the cats caught up to the monohulls and things got very congested. Oh, they learned in the curves up. With that wind, they learned it. As we sprinted for the finish line, the battles continued right up until the end. We lost our own battle for second place to Britain Sandy on Halcyon, who outclassed us on the second to last marker, and the race had come to an end. Very 
everybody for your help. Yeah, Thanks okay. for catching my drone. Right. <laughs> for saving it. Amazing. We uh, we came third, which was pretty good. Had some close battles with a couple of boats. It was super fun. We had like 10 to 13 knots the whole time, which was like perfect. Any more? A few people broke some things out there. I just heard a guy saying that he's lost his rudder. So any more wind, and it could have been a bit chaotic, but it was perfect. Honestly, it couldn't have gone any better. Um, yeah, we'll see how everyone feels at the prize giving, but I think the uh, general vibe is everyone's pretty stoked. We start the awards after everybody is suitably drunk. A drunk audience is a happy audience. <laughs> So amazingly enough, we had 32 boats this very first time. And they all looked magnificent out there on the course. It really was a beautiful, beautiful sight. Anyway, so uh, Colin has worked with the Bocas Marina, uh, particularly with Fabiano and with Courtney to put this together. It's been quite a bit of effort, and he himself went boat to boat, uh, pimping his race. <laughs> so let's hear it for Colin, who will introduce Emma. <laughs> because of you guys, we've, um, we've almost able to donate $1,000 to Given Surf Foundation, so thank you very much. Bocas is a very special place in our heart. We're going to move on in a couple of months, but uh, wherever we may end up, I hope to come back next year for the next Bocas annual regatta. Thank you very much. Yeah.